24 terabytes. That's absolutely insane. For OneDrive to be 24 terabytes, that means in this simple little 4 bay NAS here, I could put four of these inside and have 96 terabytes of storage. Let's be realistic, that's too much space. This is going insane. You do not need 96 terabytes of storage in your 4 bay NAS system. And if you do, you have got a problem. And if that's coming from me, that's when you know it's bad. That is right, that rather petulant introduction aside, this is the Seagate Iowolf 24 terabyte NAS hard drive, otherwise known as the Seagate Ironwolf Pro 24TB. This is the latest release in a long running series from this brand of NAS hard drives, drives that are designed for the rigors of 24 seven server use. And it's a pro series drive as well, which means they dial it up to 11 in a number of ways. Rocking out the gate with a price tag, depending on where you are in the world of about 450 to 499 nicker, depending on your currency, depending on your local tax there. This is a drive that's taking capacity very, very seriously. It's been a number of years now where we've seen uh, Seagate effectively overtake everyone in the market with the larger capacity drives, beating everyone to the punch. This drive arriving with 10 platters, that's 2.4 terabytes per platter. It's a 10 uh, platter drive, rocking out the gate with a 7200 RPM. But I tell you what really surprised me about this. This drives CMR, it's conventional magnetic recording or perpendicular magnetic recording if you are old school. It's not even SMI, it's not shingle magnetic recording, something that the majority of brands are still heavily reliant on at this capacity level. Now, on top of that, it's got a workload there. We could talk about mean time between failure, but it's not the past. Let's talk about workloads. It's 550 terabytes annual workload on this drive with a reported performance of between 270 and 285 megabytes per second. More on that later on. And alongside that, much like other Seagate Ironwolf drives, it's rocking out the gate with all of that agile array stuff. And again, I'm not gonna bore you with it, but basically, it's vibration sensors, it's stability sensors, it's dual plane balancing inside, and ultimately it means when the platters inside the drive are spinning, you need to know that things aren't gonna wobble. You need to know that that arm is being able to read things on a stabler platform as possible. And thanks to helium sealing inside these drives, allowing lesser friction to occur inside, it means those platters are getting thinner and the amount of space when you were looking at heat assisted magnetic recording or energy assisted magnetic recording or microwave a sit of magnetic recording the amount of data that's going on those platters is getting bigger and that's where we come back to this drive when we had this drive set up in an external usb dock the numbers we got were pretty darn good and i would argue pretty darn consistent we had it in a windows 10 machine uh, rocking out the gate with an nvme os drive inside and 16 gig of memory it was more than powerful enough um, i believe it was a 12 core uh, 12 gen i5 processor in aja uh, we tested a 1 gig 4 gig and 16 a gigabyte test file there and within AJA we saw performance numbers of 270 over 273, 272 over 272 and 271 over 270 megabytes per second. Sustained performance in read and write for the better part of 15 minutes. This did not get oversaturated. Then we move over to Atto uh, Disk Benchmark and from there we tested a 256 meg, a 1 gigabyte and 4 gigabyte test file and pretty consistently across the board we saw performance numbers of 2 55 to 263 megabytes per second of both read and write performance there. Finally, we went over to standard good old fashioned Windows transfer. And with Windows transfer there, we transferred 20 gig of data three times and every time we saw it take approximately two minutes and it was two minutes five to two minutes 10. And the average performance there was 262 to 265 megabytes per second, but it peaked at 265 regularly, depending on the density of the data there. Now, you didn't come to this video for this 24TB because you're gonna stick this in a PC. That would be bonkers. Let's be realistic, you wanna buy a drive like that because you wanna stick it in a NAS. The aforementioned four bay I mentioned at the start of the video, which I still claim would be insanity to put this in that. But nonetheless, I know there's gonna be a number of you that are going to do that. You're going to fill a system like this with 24TB drives. So I went ahead and did it. I took these 24TB drives and I took this Synology DS923 Plus, and I know you're about to say in the comments, Synology doesn't let you use these drives, and you're right. But nonetheless, 
I took four of these drives and stuck them inside this DS923. I set up the device and stuck it in a RAID 5 and later on I stuck it in a RAID 0. Unsurprisingly, Synology's operating system uh, did not like me using the Seagate 24 TV drives because they weren't on the compatibility listing. And we've got a full video coming up soon where we're testing these drives inside a myriad of different NAS systems to show you what happens when you use this drive in a QNAP, a Terramaster, an Acer Store and of course the Synology again and maybe even a U Green, a Zimmer Blade and whatever else we can find along the way. But even though it did argue about using that drive, we went ahead and set ourselves up a shared drive on a RAID 5 and a RAID 0 later on. We then connected this device up with uh, a 10 GBE connection on the rear of this system. That's why we went for it. And over 10 GBE, these are the performance numbers we saw. In a RAID 5 array over SMB, we saw uh, in AJA performance numbers of 730 megabytes per second read over uh, 590 megabytes per second write. And that was in a RAID Five environment via AJA over 10 GBE from the same system we tested earlier with a single drive. Now, we weren't content with that, and that was over, by the way, a 512 meg, a 1 gig, and a 4 gigabyte file. We went ahead and formatted the system to a RAID 0 because we wanted to see, although we're going to have no redundancy, what if we actually wanted to hit that 96 terabyte limit and really push the boat out in terms of performance? This cheeky little dual core. <laughs> Four bay system with those drives inside allowed us to hit 785 megabytes per second uh, read and 740 megabytes per second write, which means we pretty much three quarter saturated that 10G connection with these drives in this modest little four bay from Synology. Now imagine using these drives in larger quantities with a more powerful CPU with 25 gig. 50 gig or 100 gig. This is a very high performing drive and over SMB performance on 10G and AJA and earlier on when we saw sustained uh, Windows transfer speed to the single drive, this is a drive that can back up its performance claims that Seagate are putting out there. Now, what do I like about it? As mentioned, I like the performance, I like the sustained performance, I like we've got, for example, the annual annual workload, but I also like that we've got Seagate Iron Wolf, you know, dry failure protection there in terms of if you lose your data, they'll go ahead and go data recovery for you. We've made a video about it before, I'm not going to bore you with it. Also, the fact it works with an Synology, although no one's going to tell you it, is a nice thing, and I've tested it already, we've already half filmed it, I got it working inside, immediately inside a QNAP and inside an Acer store, they already work. The price tag is definitely going to put users off, but you've got to factor in it's 24 terabytes. And by the way, again, I bloody love that this is not SMR, given that, you know, the majority of drives at this capacity are already rocking out the gate with shingle magnetic recording. And Seagate have managed to largely bypass that for this NAS drive, and they've still yet to taint their um, NAS series with any kind of SMR drive, which is great to hear. Also, alongside the agile array and load balancing, we haven't even talked about the time limited error uh, recovery which means that when the drive can sometimes get into bad patches of read and write when uh, th that can happen ordinarily with hard drives it allows the drive to just move on rather than get into hang mode which can happen with a lot of non-NAS drives again it's not specific to them but at least within that inclusion of all of those bells and wills uh, bells and whistles of NAS drives that's really desirable to see in something like this but again is it perfect no one the power consumption is a little higher than I think some people would like to see and obviously in larger Arrays is going to creep up, but I'm not hugely surprised by the capacity it would be like that. The price tag is not going to be for everyone, understandably so. And I quite like that Seagate are rocking out these big drives, but I really, really, really wish they would lean heavy on the NAS brands to get these on compatibility lists earlier than they do. But apart from that, it's very hard to fault what is currently the biggest NAS hard drive in the market right now in terms of performance versus stability and arguably versus price. Maybe don't go filling a four-bay little modest system like this with a drive like this. I don't think you're the intended user, but maybe you want to prove me wrong. What do you guys think? Would you get hold of a drive like this? Maybe there's something I've missed in this video for you. Let me know so I can include it in the multi-NAS test video coming up on this series of drives. Thank you so much for watching. There's a link in the description to the full detailed written review or we're going to even more detail on all of those tests on this drive. So if you want to find out more, go in there and find out. If you've got any questions about this or test scenarios that you want to see, let me know. And apart from that, did any support that myself and Eddie, just us here at NAS Compares can do to help you, let us know in the comments or use the links to the support sections below. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time.